Air quality has been improving for a number of years now as a result of increasingly stringent emissions legislation. But there's still very much left to do. So what we need to do to continue to improve air quality is to focus on transient driving behaviour. So thinking about accelerations, decelerations, how vehicles interact with urban features like speed bumps, roundabouts, etc. So in order to do that, we need high sample rate measurement equipment that allows us to look at the intricate details of the, the transients as the, the vehicle is driven in real conditions. Combustion in Cambridge has been accurately testing emissions in a lab-based environment since 1987. And now that same fast response technology is going out on the road. OK, so we've got our test vehicle already fitted with this two-channel fast NOx analyzer. We'll be taking engine out and tailpipe data simultaneously. And this is the same main control unit that can be used in laboratory, and it's supported by these two accessory boxes. These two conduits connect the units that are in the rear of the vehicle to two sample heads, and these contain the detectors. They're positioned very close to the points in the exhaust that we want to sample from, both before and after the catalyst. We're taking our engine data, simultaneously logged to the same file from the diagnostics port, and we're using a dash cam to record the traffic conditions which might be causing these transient events. And finally, we use very accurate GPS. Combined with our fast emissions gives us centimetre accuracy of where the emissions have been deposited on the road. Right, should we take it out on the road? There we go, we can see straight away that there is almost no catalyst conversion efficiency at the cold start, but we're able to measure all of the very high frequency details of each of the engine firing cycles. You can see engine out emissions in blue and tailpipe emissions in green. As the, as the catalyst starts to heat up, we start to convert NO and the tailpipe emissions are reduced. But as we pull away from a set of traffic lights or over a speed bump or from a roundabout, you have transient operation which doesn't favour the catalyst, so NO is, is leaked through to the tailpipe. So as we decelerate into the speed bump, combustion stops, and then as we pull away after the speed bump, we get a spike of emissions. This measurement using very fast response analyzers highlights that you can measure these very short duration spikes of emissions very accurately. So we're currently driving down a street in Cambridge which has employed speed bumps to reduce the average speed through this residential neighborhood. But as we go over each of these speed bumps, we're identifying some large emission spikes which will clearly be adversely affecting the air quality in this, in this residential neighbourhood. So Matt, I wouldn't say that the way you're driving here is particularly unrepresentative of the way the general public drive, but the way that the congestion and the traffic flows in, kind of encourages you to drive in a particular way, which is, is clearly producing large amounts of emissions. Right, now we've taken some data on the road, we can bring that back into the lab. What we've done here is we've combined the fast emissions measurement with the high accuracy GPS to produce a map of the pollutants as we're depositing them. Purple denotes high emissions at the start of the test when the catalytic converter is cold, and yellow denotes low emissions as the catalyst is warm at the end of the test. So we can see on this map there are a number of short duration emissions events such as the pull away onto this road, the pull away onto this roundabout and also several short duration tailpipe events during gear changes in congested traffic. And so the identification of these pollution hotspots with centimetre level accuracy is really useful for air quality studies. As a consequence of real driving emissions, we really need to understand with great resolution where 
pollution is being deposited by, by modern vehicles. And as a consequence, how that disperses within the, the urban landscape. So that in the future we can start to think not just about the design of vehicles, but also how we design our cities, how we manage our traffic flows in order that air quality overall is better.